Hello, here I am, sans makeup, with all my blemishes. And I am doing what started out as, I think it was a question on Emily Noel's um, Ask Me Anything, and then someone, and I wish I could remember who, but there were a gajillion questions, asked me the same question, and then a couple YouTubers did it already, including Emily Noel 83 um, It was, what 10 products would you buy first if you had to replace your whole makeup collection? That does not make for a catchy title, but that's what it is. I... I'm going to do that, but I'm going to cheat. Not cheat, I'm going to change it up a little bit because if there was, I don't know, a flood, a fire, some natural disaster, a very strange burglary where they took all my makeup, I don't know. Or maybe the most likely scenario is I'm traveling and I packed my makeup and they lost my luggage. Why limit it to 10? I feel like to give you the most realistic, this is what I would absolutely replace right away is more, reasonable and I actually have 11 products but really it would be 12 because I would I left out an eyeliner whoops spoiler alert because I can have eyeshadow double as that but if I'm already buying 10 things why not get two or three more things so I have my face cleansed and moisturized with the usual suspects and I will link a morning skincare routine video somewhere around here Let's get all this hair out of the way. I don't know how people do their makeup with their hair down. I just, I have no idea. Also, I have a feeling this is gonna be like a 30 minute video. So let's just roll into it. So skin is prepped. First things first, this is the foundation I've been reaching for constantly. It's the Flower Beauty Light Illusion um, Luminous Makeup Nude Skin Feel. And I am wearing it in the shade Ivory L2. Technically, shade L1 porcelain is an exact match. Maybe a teeny bit light. I don't mind going a, like a half shade darker and warmer. It kind of makes me look bronzed or not pale. So anyway, I love this foundation. This is what the only foundation that I brought to the Reward Style Conference. Oh, and I told you guys I wouldn't bring that up again. Um, anyway... I like to apply it with a beauty blender, actually. That was about two pumps. Doo -doo. I just pounce it. Now, when it's, a, oops, I got a bug bite, by the way, like literally just as I was about to film, I took the dogs out and that, so we'll, we'll just do this. I can literally see the hole in my neck where that sucker got me. Um, what I was going to say is that when I'm wearing a foundation that's not quite a perfect shade match, whether it's too light or too dark, always, and you should do this regardless, but always bring your foundation down the neck. Um, it helps hide the obvious line of demarcation, which we've all been guilty of. And I just go back, I put a little, like whatever's left on my hand, I go back, put it right on the sponge and just go over the areas that need a little more coverage, but this does an amazing job. I could pile it on and make it full coverage. If I use a brush, for instance, like my flat top kabuki brush, um, that'll give me a little more coverage, but not necessary. I don't care what the limit is. I will give up other products for this one, although I'm looking for a dupe. Again, maybe not drugstore dupe, but at least another brand. Um, so this is the MAC Prep and Prime Highlighting Pen in the shade Radiant Rose. It is the best under eye brightener, dark circle corrector, if you don't have intense dark circles. And if you're fair to, I'd say medium toned maybe. If you're medium and up, there's another shade that has the word peach in it that I would recommend. Um, but I will not give this up unless I can find a dupe. Um, but I will not give this up. I will always wear it. And the key to making this have a little more coverage is you swipe it on. And um, I don't go crazy like painting stripes all over, but while that's, I let that set. And then I'll go in with my blemish concealer, which lately has been this, and I am really loving it. It's the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Full Coverage Concealer. I Again, this is what I wore to the conference. I have other concealer favorites, but this one can do a lot of, it can double duty and it just it works in so many situations. The other ones that I use are more for specific 
pinpoint issues, I'd say. Um, I do wish, mine comes out a little cool tone. Like I can slap this on all over the place and I need to, cause I had a facial last week, which was great. It was the first one I've had in like, I don't know, over a year, but um, they do, it does bring out some little hidden gems, I'd say the first next week or so after you do that. All right, I'm going in with my beauty blender. If I want the coverage to be a little more intense, obviously I use a brush, use a finger, but I feel like this really works well. I've been doing it for about a month or so, maybe longer, and I'm very happy with it. But I don't want to diffuse under the eyes, so I'm just using my favorite concealer brush, which is kind of big. It's, um, I don't even know if it's meant to be a concealer brush. Yes, it is. It's the Concealer Blend Kabuki Brush from Sigma. Well, there you go. And I guess that's a topic we should cover here. Um, you can make products have a lot more um, options or do a lot more for you depending on the tool you use to apply it. A finger, a brush, or some kind of beauty sponge will have a different effect. Same with eyeshadows. If you use a more dense, densely packed brush will give you much more pigment but much more precise placement versus a fluffy or looser brush will blend something out and diffuse the pigment. So you can get a lot of products to do double duty or more for you just depending on how what you use to apply it. I would have brought out my Urban Decay uh, All Nighter Concealer to put on top of this, but I'm trying to follow the rules a little bit. So I'm gonna go back with this concealer and just do my under eyes. But really, I like it. I would prefer it one shade lighter than this, but they don't make it one shade lighter than this. That's okay. With the um, highlighter pen, it does brighten up quite a bit. And I'm gonna take that concealer and actually put it on my lids to do double duty as an eyeshadow primer, which I have been doing. I have not reached for my beloved Wet n Wild in a while. I find this works just fine. It's one less step. Now we need to set it and I will be good and only use one powder and it's gonna be this one. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Press Powder. I'm just using an old powder brush. I just find that it has really nice coverage. Um, it makes my makeup stay on forever but it is very lightweight, so it's light enough that I can use it under the eyes too. So speaking of brushes, I'm gonna use a slightly smaller brush to set under my eyes. I'm being a little sneaky, and I found a product that has three products in one, but the reality is this is what I've been using nonstop anyway lately, so it's not really cheating if this is what I'm using. And I swear Flower Beauty did not sponsor this. This is the Flower Beauty Lift and Sculpt Contouring Palette. It has everything you need. It has my bronzer, my blush, and my highlighter right here. So let's do that. I'm using a new brush. A lot of you have been asking me to do like a swag bag review from the conference. Um, I just think that's kind of tacky. I mean, not the question. I get it, you're curious, but I think it would come off kind of like braggadocious. So. I will just show you stuff that I'm using that I got that made it into my regular routine. If you don't see me talk about it, then it wasn't worth talking about. Okay, so one of the things I got was this Heavenly Lux French Boutique Blush Brush number four. I'm gonna use it for um, bronzer because I want it to kind of like hit under the cheekbone and this angled thing will do that. Also because this um, is not the biggest palette in the world and my usual very fluffy um, brush I use for bronzer gets all over the place. So this will kind of do double duty as bronzer and contour the way I'm applying it. It all goes back to how do you apply it. So yeah, I'm using it to warm up my face, but I'm also using it to kind of carve out some cheekbones and define the jaw and also hide the fact that my foundation is not a perfect match. Um, little trick, I put a little bronzer across the bridge of my nose because if I were out in the sun, which never happens, that's where it would hit me. Next is the highlighter, ta-da, right there. A couple of people have asked um, why I do the highlighter before blush, and that's because um, I layer the highlighter under my blush so that the highlighter looks like it's coming out from behind it, which it is, 
and I feel like it's a slightly more natural effect. I mean, let's be real. Highlighter, there's nothing natural about highlighter. Nobody shines like this, but um, it helps make it a little less in your face. If you want it in your face, then by all means switch the order in which you apply it. And then I'm just gonna take my blush brush, which is not a blush brush, and just... When I was originally trying to stick to 10, I tried to pare down my brow products and um, then I realized that's just stupid. I wouldn't do that in real life. I wouldn't not buy a product just like for this self-imposed 10 limit rule. No. So the two brow products that I just can't live without is the Benefit Precisely My Brow in shade two and the NYX Brow Mascara in, I believe it is blonde. However, if I were to only do one, I would do the Lancome Brow Stylist because it has a little more pigment. So I can fill in my brows with it and then brush it up. But let's just keep it real because you know, that's how we do it. So first I will fill in my brows with the um, brow pencil and then I'll set them in place with the brow mascara. The other reason I really like that particular brow mascara better than others is because my brows, whoops, went a little crazy there. Brows are a little bit darker than I'd like and I swear that the NYX Blonde uh, lightens them a little bit. So that's kind of awesome. And then for my beloved brow, and this one package, this one tube has lasted me, oh gosh, I don't know, a year? I swear, it may, well, that sounds crazy. Maybe six, no, maybe a year. I think it's a year. So it was down to two, there were two palettes I was gonna reach for, for eyeshadow. One was the Flower Beauty eyeshadow palette in Golden Neutral, Golden Natural. Um, but then I would have had to add a single eyeshadow because it doesn't have a matte or satin like brulee right here. So I picked a different palette, which I also love and is actually more versatile. And it is the Too Faced Chocolate Bar. If I had to only use one palette for the rest of my life, which is a strange concept, I would have to use this one because it's the most neutral yet warm. It has a lot of options between the matte satins and shimmers. It does have a little bit of color, but not a lot, which is kind of how I like my eyeshadows. So that's what we're gonna go with. And I'm just gonna do the most basic eye ever because that's usually what I do. I'm just taking the large um, skin tone, well, my skin tone, brow bone shade, and just putting that from the crease up just to kind of help with the blending. All right, let's lay down a transition shade, shall we? Um, I'm gonna do the, I think this is milk chocolate. I have the original chocolate bar palette, so the names are on the back. Not helpful, no. The names are not even on the back. The names were on that plastic overlay, which is long gone, thanks Too Faced. I think they now print it either right on the palette or on the back of the palette, so. I'm not even trying to be neat or precise. It blends well enough that I don't have to worry about that. Going back and blending it out with the white, white, with the like ivory, I guess, shade. I mean, this is really the fast eye I would do. Every day it's just a choice. Do I do gold or do I do pink? I think today I'm gonna do pink. Just slap that on with my all-time favorite shader brush, the MAC 239. This is how I do my makeup when I am not talking to you guys, when I'm just sitting by myself in front of the makeup mirror. Then with a Sigma E25, I am gonna go in with, I usually reach for one of these two shimmery ones. Um, meeny, meeny. I'm gonna do the slightly richer one in the left bottom left corner. Poke that in the side, blend it up into the crease, push it across the lid a little bit, pull it under the eye too. We'll blend later. Go back and blend. I'm gonna take a little pencil brush um, and use the lightest iridescent shade in the corners just a little bit. And I'm gonna go back with that milk chocolate shade and run that all the way under the eye. Doing this, by the way, kind of hides that wrinkle right under your eye, strangely. And then just to punch up that color, I'm gonna go back with the flat shader brush and just redo a little bit of this light pink because it kind of got a little bit lost. In real life, I just go get the L'Oreal Infallible Brown Eyeliner. But 
to show you that's not necessary, I just have a small angle brush and I'm gonna go in with this darkest, almost looks black shade. And I'm just, with that darkest shade, it's like a brown black, just gonna run it, push it. I'm not even running it, I'm pushing it on the lash line. So that can double as my eyeliner. This takes far longer than just running an eyeliner pencil. Bloop, bloop. So um, for those of you who think you're saving time by skipping eyeliner and just using eyeshadow, I would say, I don't think so. Just saying. Okay. Um, let me curl up my lashes. Hang on. As far as mascara goes, I could use any one of a half dozen and be totally happy. However, I have loved the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara for a long time, then I fell out of love with it. Then this was included in that swag bag and um, I love it again. I don't know if they reformulated it. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's just new so it's working really well, but oh man, this is so, when it's good, it is so good. So I'm just gonna tilt my head down, do my bottom lashes, tilt my head up, do my top lashes and come right back. Okay, last product is gonna be lips. So if I wanted, the one I would most likely use and I will keep as the official product is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Lip Gloss, specifically in the shade Radiant Rose. That's kind of funny. However, if I wanted something that looked like a lipstick that had more opacity to it, I would have to go with the YSL Glossy Stain and it would have to be in shade 15 because it gives you the look of a lipstick, it stays on a really long time, but it also has a sheen to it like a gloss, so it's like a two-in-one product. But this is what lives in my purse. Like I don't take it out of my purse. So let's use this one. All right, let's, uh, my hair is kind of a mess because it's raining, but uh, yeah, it's a mess. Who cares? So that's it. That is the full look with all the products I would repurchase immediately if my makeup collection disappeared or the more likely scenario if I'm traveling and the airplane has lost my luggage and I have access to uh, Walmart, Ulta, and Nordstrom and Sephora, because <laughs> I can't get them all in one place. That would be a really fun video. If you could only shop at one store that sells makeup, what would you get from that store to do a full makeup look? Hmm. I think I'd have to go with Ulta, because I can get my drugstore stuff and most of the high-end stuff that I like. Where would you shop? Let me know in the comments below. Um, thank you to the amazingly wonderful subscriber who came up with this question. Thank you to Emily Noel 83 for doing this video first and giving me the idea to apply this as I talk about it. Um, if you are a YouTuber, consider doing this tag. I won't limit you to your top 10. Just show me what you're gonna buy to do your face with. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.